do you have to come back? Sabrina said. The town is a disaster. And my dad, tell me he's safe. Goldilocks pleaded. Sabrina could see the woman still felt strongly for her father. She wasn't sure how to react. He's fine, but he needs you, Daphne said. He's under a sleeping spell. We need someone to kiss him. We were told you were the only one who could do that. Goldilocks blushed. A kiss from someone who truly loves him is all he needs. Can't you get your mother to do this? Sabrina shook her head. No, she's asleep too. Never a dull moment in Fairy Pool Landing, the blonde beauty said. How did this happen? The scholar handed it. Uncle Jake croaked. The scholar who? The blonde asked. They're the bad guys, Daphne said. They kidnapped my parents almost two years ago. Now they are running the town. That creepy guy, the Black Knight, he was one of them. He's been chasing me for a month, Goldilocks said. If he is part of the group that kidnapped your parents, they probably don't want anyone to wake them up. Whoever sent him will send others. Come back and we'll protect you. Sabrina said. Goldilocks looked into Sabrina's face. Come back to Fairyport Landing. Sabrina nodded hopefully. Goldilocks shook her head. I can't do that. Terrible things occurred just to set me free. Your grandfather died because of it. Your grandmother doesn't want to see me, and I'm sure Henry wouldn't want to see me either. He told me to leave him alone. But we can't wake him up without you, Daphne begged. Without you, it's impossible. Goldilocks turned to Uncle Jake. If I went back, could you set me free again? Uncle Jake shook his head. Sabrina wasn't surprised. After what had happened the first time he shut down the barrier, she doubted that her uncle would ever attempt it again. She wondered if he would ever even do it for Briar. Then no, Goldilocks said. I won't go back. I'm sorry. I wish I could help. Don't give up hope. You live in Fairyport Landing. Anything is possible there. She turned, and a moment later, she was walking down the steps that led to the second level. Sabrina started to chase after her, but Uncle Jake snatched her arm and pulled her back. He shook his head. Let her go, he whispered painfully. We have to stop her. We can force her to go back with us, Sabrina said. That's not what we do, Stephanie said softly. Sabrina noticed Daphne hadn't looked at her since the black knight had been thrown from the building. But, again, Uncle Jake shook his head. We'll find another way. It's time to go home. Chapter 9 Sabrina watched her uncle pack up the traveler's chest. An hour later, the same rabbit and tortoise that delivered it came and picked it up. The rabbit hoisted it onto his partner's shell and walked it over to the little truck. Moments later, they were gone, along with the only hope the family had of ever seeing Goldilocks again. We could go back and change her mind, Sabrina pleaded as the family watched the truck disappear down the road. She said, no, Sabrina, Jake exclaimed, the speaking still heard his voice. None of you care, Sabrina raged at her family. None of you care whether mom and dad ever wake up. She raced upstairs to the room where her parents slept, nestled herself between their bodies, and cried into her hands. Her old thoughts of anger toward ever after surfaced. Most were betrayers. Others couldn't be counted on. She wept openly, not caring if Mira or anyone else for that matter heard her railing at the world around her. Mira's face appeared briefly in the reflection, but then faded away. 
She suddenly thanked him for letting her be alone. She lay there for hours, her face and neck drenched in tears. She in until even until eventually she was too exhausted to continue. After a long while, she got to her feet and went out into the hallway. There she found Granny, Uncle Jake, Briar, and Elvis sitting on the hardwood floor, obviously waiting for her. They all had expressions of concern mis- mixed with forced smiles. Granny took Sabrina by the hand. Sabrina, Sabrina pulled away. I can't take a lecture right now. I was going to say I was sorry. I know how heartbroken you feel. We feel it as well, dear. We had the same hopes that you did. Sabrina nodded sadly. Where's Daphne? She's in your room, the old woman said. You might want to leave her alone, Uncle Jake said. Why? She's a little angry right now, he replied. I know how she feels, Sabrina said, ignoring the warning. She turned and walked down the hall and entered her bedroom. There, she found Daphne sitting at Henry's desk, braiding her hair into her familiar pigtails. She had taken off Sabrina's clothes and was now wearing a pair of cotton candy colored pajamas with little stars on them. Her face was cleanly scrubbed in lip gloss, and she had folded Sabrina's clothes neatly and set them on the bed. Are you okay? Sabrina said. We don't have to talk about it, Sabrina, the little girl said. In fact, I'd rather not. Sabrina was taken aback by her sister's attitude. You were angry about the weapon. Well, I can't explain. I don't want to talk about it, Daphne interrupted. Well, I think we should. I want to explain my side of what happened. Daphne burst into tears. How are you going to explain that you stole from me, kept the secret, and lied about it? How are you going to explain that you, that you betrayed me? You don't even know what betrayed means. Yes, I do. Daphne said, heaving a new paperback dictionary at her sister. I looked it up. Sabrina bent down and picked up her sister's dictionary. Yes, I lied to you. I stole the key and snuck it out and took the weapon without you knowing. You were too young to have that kind of responsibility, and you refused to see the danger we are in. So I did it. You treat me like a ba- You treat me like I'm a baby, Sabrina. I'm not a baby. I have a reason to be angry too. You've been walking around here for days, wearing my clothes, mocking me. I've seen you roll your eyes and your snarky comments. You think it's nice to be made fun of? I wasn't making fun of you, Sabrina. I was trying to be more like you. You're my role model, Stephanie said. I was dressing like you and wearing my hair like yours, cause I was trying to grow up a little. I wanted to be more like my sister. But not anymore. Sabrina looked at the stack of clothing on the bed. I think I'll go back to being myself. I like me, Daphne said. Sabrina searched for words, but they were jumbled like pieces of a jigsaw puzzle that didn't fit together. I was making fun of you. I love you, though I don't like you very much. The little girl said, "It's obvious to me that you don't like me much either." That's not true," Sabrina said. "I'm not going to bother you any more. I'm sleeping in Granny's room tonight. Tomorrow, Mister Bourbon and Mister Swinehorn are gonna come over and build me my own bedroom," her sister said. She finished with her hair and got from the desk. Hand it over," Sabrina shuffled her feet. "What the kazoo?" You can't handle it. It's magic, Sabrina. Give it to me. But Daphne shook her head. Don't argue with me. Just hand it over. Sabrina ducked into her pocket for the kazoo. Her fingers tingled when she was when she touched it. It made her feel good, but she knew that feeling was false. She knew her sister was right. She took it out of her pocket and handed it to Daphne. 
I have something of yours, the little girl said, digging into her overalls. She pulled a tube of lip gloss out of her pocket and placed it into Sabrina's hand. Then she walked into the hallway and closed the door behind her. Sabrina bit her lips so hard she tasted blood. She wanted to cry, but couldn't anymore. Puck had been right. He had warned her that the truth would come out, and when it did, it would be ugly. That's the only thing he got wrong. It wasn't just ugly, it was horrible. The next morning, Robin and Little John arrived bright and early. We've got some bad news, Little John said when Granny asked them in. The tape is missing, Robin explained. Everything Hatchet said is gone. We've got no evidence. What happened? Sabrina cried. We don't know, but we have our suspicions, Robin said. You know that snail on the jury? The one with the scarlet hand mark on his chest? Sure, Daphne said. Well, this morning when I woke up, the tape was gone, and there was a trail of slime leading to the front door. The place smelled like apple tobacco, too. We don't have a lot of hope if the jury is trying to sabotage our case, Little John replied. Was still Bluebeard calling Red Riding Hood to the stand today? I'm sure she'll back up Hatchet's story, Robin said. Maybe not, Daphne said as she removed the kazoo from her pocket. I have an idea that might put a whammy into Bluebeard's case. A whammy? Robin Hood asked. It's my new word. It means something no one saw coming. Little John scooped Daphne up into his arms. Well, young lady, we could really use a whammy right about now. Nurse Brad seemed startled when the group returned to the hospital. She nearly choked on her pork chop sandwich. You want to see her again? No one ever wants to see her again. She led the group down the familiar hallway and unlocked Red's door. The child was sitting at the same little table having the same tea party she had had the last time they had visited. Sabrina wondered if Red had even gone to bed. Before Spratt could lock them in, Sabrina turned to her. Would you happen to have an empty jar with a tight lid? Why? Spratt asked. Let's just say it's going to make your job here at the hospital a lot easier. Spratt shrugged. I'll check, she said, then locked the door. You came back, Red said, clapping her hands. Please sit, have some tea. Daphne sat down at the table. I'd love some, Daphne said, as she took the kazoo from her pocket. Sabrina stood beside her. Red, do you remember when you said you were sick inside your brain? Red nodded. Well, how would you like to feel better? Red clapped. Then I can go home. Robin joined the girls at the table. Girls, I'm worried about this. Daphne has never tried to use this kazoo before. If what you say is true, it can demolish a house with one little puff. I've used it a couple of times. It kind of does what you want it to, Sabrina explained. Except for the time you destroyed the bank, Puck reminded her. Okay, about 50% of the time, it works like a charm. I'm still a bit confused, Little John said. Are you planning to blow this crazy child into the next county? What good will that do us? It does more than blow houses down. Right, Daphne? Sabrina said. The little girl nodded. It cures the mentally insane. Uh, maybe you should turn it on yourself, because you sound crazy. Puck That seems to be the end of this video. I'll send more later. Goodbye.